I'm Allie Chanthorn Reinman with Life Hacker, and we're joined today by Marcus Samuelson. Happy to have you here. Thank you for having me. <laughs> Marcus is here because uh, for, for a number of reasons, but also opening a new restaurant recently in Chelsea area called Havmar. Very excited about Havmar opening in Chelsea. I think November 12, 13, around that time. Uh -huh. We're going through it right now. Um, seafood, small plates, super delicious. Hav means ocean in Swedish and mar means honey. Uh, in Ethiopia we call it, you know, honey it's mar and, and in all the different, in most of the different languages. With all these these different flavors that you've, you've come to discover personally, um, what would you say is a, a spice that you always reach for when you're cooking at home for you, for your family? Yeah, I mean, uh, being from Ethiopia, so berbere is the spice blend that we use. That's our salt and pepper. That's on everything. But I also love like something like a, a great suya spice from Nigeria or great el rasanut from Morocco. Uh, you know, coriander, cumin, a uh, little bit of cinnamon hints. So powerful, but not spicy. It's, you know, Northern Africa has a lot of spice blends like that. And I love that, especially over a salad or a, over a hummus with, if I make something like that for my son. So, you know, I think Berber will always be the first thing an Ethiopian grass for. Food is, we can all experience this, right? We think about salt, sweet, sour, bitter, and umami. Those are the flavor points that we can all experience and taste. Yeah. And we do them through sort of aesthetic uh, texture and fragrance, right? That's why when you have a cold, you can't really taste anything. And you, so sad. <laughs> you know, exactly. Yeah. But so I, that's how I think about it. So I try to stay open, not so much like, I'm not eating this, I'm not eating that. Right. Just stay open to it. What would you say is a a simple dish, like simple to prepare, yeah. that you get the most like flavor, bang for your buck kind of thing? Yeah, I mean, uh, I wouldn't be talking to you if I, it would not be for my grandmother Helga. She taught me early on how to make Swedish meatballs. And uh -huh. uh, when I make meatballs for my son, I always, I mean, he's probably tired of that story now that, oh, Grandma Helga, that's not here anymore. She's the one taught me how to roll meatballs. So we have like these meatballs rolling competitions and I always take pleasure in, in making them and, and, and you know, mixing the fat content so it's like the right richness to them. And yeah. sometimes I mix it up with chicken just to make them a little leaner, but that's something that I take a lot of joy making. Uh, doesn't always make it to the restaurant, but it's also a dish that just is great at home.